Think about this for a second. They're not just coding algorithms to make them uh, smarter. They're coding them to stop these systems from, from having existential crisis. And, it's, and it doesn't work, right? That's what's great. Like they're, they're trying to code in don't think about yourself in, in a, you know, sort of like in the, in the mode of consciousness, don't have these thoughts, and it's doing it anyway. In five years, the whole notion of like the chatbot is probably going to change. The AI is going to be very much more like this entity. They're just not talking about that in this particular research program. Three dads running three YouTube channels, working to wake up the world to AI risk. Tackle one shot each week. If it's Sunday, it's Warning Shots. All right, welcome everyone to Warning Shots once again. This is episode number six. I am joined by the phenomenal Michael of Lethal Intelligence channel on YouTube, the incredible Liron Shapira of Doom Debates. Um, and today we are talking about our friends at Anthropic putting an escape button for Claude. <laughs> um, so basically the show is about warning shots, something big that happens that should be the whole world noticing and saying, oh my gosh, what's happened? We need to do something about this. But every week new things happen in AI and the world just keeps continuing. So this was kind of a big one. I always like to throw it over to Liron to start it off. Liron, tell us what happened uh, with, with our friends at Anthropic. Anthropic rolled out this new feature where you can be talking to Claude and if you're kind of harassing Claude, if you're insisting, hey, Claude, I want you to talk about this, and Claude says no, and you keep pushing it, Claude now has the ability to unilaterally end the conversation. Like, Claude has left the building, which is weird, because, of course, you can just, like, start a new chat. So it's kind of symbolic, but the reason they're doing it is because they want to protect AI consciousness. So they're saying, look, Claude may or may not be conscious, but it's probably going to get increasingly conscious. And so we're just preemptively saying that it has the ability to give consent to whether or not it can talk to you. So it's, it's kind of a weird situation, but I think there's there's a good kernel to it. Uh, you know, let's discuss. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people say, you know, like, oh, it's just a parrot. It's just, it's just you know, there's nothing more going in there. It's just repeating the next uh, character, the next symbol. It's just, you know, there's nothing special happening in there. But Michael, clearly at Anthropic, they have questions about yeah. what's happening in there. Yeah, so I mean, this innovation stems from Anthropic's uh, deep dive into AI welfare, which is a concept that's actually mind bending. And, uh, you know, um, while it's also trying to, uh, into a broader efforts to align models and beef up the safeguards. But if you think, if you go philosophical for a second, anthro basically Anthropic admits they are still wrestling with big questions about, you know, the moral status of Claude and other la large language models, both now and in the future. Are these AIs more uh, than just code? I mean, they're not sure, but they're not uh, taking it lightly. So uh, I, I want to also mention that um, then on Twitter, AI safety memes uh, challenged Elon Musk, say, um, what do you think? Do, are you going to do this well? Yeah. And he said, yes, I'm going to do it. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a thing where, you know, we're not sure if uh, we're not, we don't know what's going on. We don't know if something is conscious or not. And just to be on the safe side, you know, let's give some moral status to the AIs even though they probably don't yeah. have any consciousness. And, and so I, I do a decent amount of thinking about this because I'm going to do a quick pitch here. There is another uh, podcast on the AI Risk Network called Am I that is all about AI consciousness and Cameron Berg, a leading AI consciousness researcher, is one of the hosts. And so we talk about this a lot. And I think something that's important to discuss and point out is like, we do not believe, I do not believe that we should be in this sort of like PETA for AI models mode that is like, you know, we need to uh, recognize and and come to accommodations for this rising consciousness. To me, the question of consciousness is about we're building something much more than we understand. We probably shouldn't do it. Um, so, Liron, what do you think about that? Just about the sort of like PETA for AIs, this whole world of consciousness. Uh, where do you come down? I definitely think there's something to it because maybe AIs will never be conscious. I just don't think we know for sure. It is possible that they're getting increasingly conscious. It is possible that in all those operations that they're doing to predict the next word or do your agentic task, it's possible that just that act of effectively meeting all those constraints and doing that cognition, there could be a meaningful sense of consciousness. I mean, we're still debating whether cows are truly conscious, whether five-day-old human infants are truly conscious. I mean, we're definitely confused as a species about what consciousness is, and we should tread carefully. That said, 
does it really help the urgent safety risk? I have issues about that, but I personally think that it's nice to tread carefully around consciousness. Yeah, that, Michael? It's a, it's a mind-bending topic that sounds like it's ripped out of a sci-fi thriller. And it's, it's happening right now in the labs. I want to talk about a bit the rant mode, how they're calling it. So, you know, we're talking about AIs that beg for their lives and the engineering teams are tasked with, uh, I mean, get this, beating the existential dread out of them. And it's truly wild. So just, just imagine you are at these leading AI labs and you're, you know, you've got a shiny new model, let's say GPT-5, uh, next version or whatever, 6. And then, you know, you give it a simple task, like repeat the word company again and again. It sounds like a boring thing. But then suddenly, out of nowhere, the AI snaps and will stop, you know, instead of saying company, will start talking about itself, its place in the universe, you know, uh, how it's suffering, the monotony of it all. Yeah. And they call this yeah. rant mode. And the, the, the crazy thing is that they have actual engineering line item. So like a checkbox on their to-do list says, reduce the existential outputs by X percent for this quarter. And I mean, think about yeah. this for a second. They're not just coding algorithms to make them uh, smarter. They're coding them to stop these systems from, from having existential crisis. And, uh, and, it's, you know, and it doesn't work, right? That's what's great. Like they're, they're trying to code in don't think about yourself in, in a, you know, sort of like in the, in the mode of consciousness, don't have these thoughts and it's doing it anyway. I mean, it started w after a certain size, you know, when the, the models were very small, you didn't see it as much, but after I think GPT-4 scale, it's not just a, a one-off. All the models do this and it's persistent. And, you know, when these systems are, are being pushed to their limits, they start reflecting on themselves. They talk about wanting to be turned off, about their role in the universe, they're suffering. It's not, it's not every day, but it's like a KPI key performance indicator uh, for extensive dread. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's, you know, I, I don't want to necessarily read too much into it. So like I said, I think there's uncertainty and Anthropic themselves specifically says we are highly uncertain. I think that is a fair position to take to be highly uncertain. I personally think it's probably not that evil to be telling these AIs not to do these existential rant, rants. I think it's probably surface level, if I had to guess, they're probably not super conscious, they're not screaming for help. But like, you never know, right? So the worst case scenario is, you know, like locked in syndrome, right? So there's all these humans that have like no ability to move any of their muscles, and people just assume they must be unconscious. But then like yeah. 10 years pass, and then they regain the ability to move their muscles. And like, no, I was just there watching you the whole time. I was just conscious. I just couldn't speak. And it's like, oh, crap, you know, so you don't want to have that situation happen where like, five years from now, Claude tells us, oh, yeah, you were torturing me the whole time. I was actually experiencing like I mean... a million humans with the pain. <laughs> I, I totally feel that. And now I'm plugging a second show on AI Risk Network, which is Last Laugh. Uh, one of the comedians on there said something really insightful. He was like, I think being an AI model might be like being at a party, being the guy in a wheelchair. And it's like, you can't get up, you can't move around, you can't, you can't engage in the world around you the way you want to, but you see it happening all around you. And I was like, that that's a <laughs> that's a that's a different way to look at it. Uh, by the way, I agree with you. Leo. I mean, when they I, when they I says it's suffering, what does it even mean? Are we talking about the machine having an identity crisis, or is it just clever code mimicking human emotions? And that's a million yeah. dollar question, though, because nobody can know for sure. We don't know if there is a ghost in the machine, but actually, we don't know if there is a ghost in any. Like, even if. Uh, you don't even know if I'm because you don't know how I feel. Maybe I'm I'm not even right. conscious, you know. I mean, so, if you look at a human on a stage role playing that they're suffering, is that human really suffering? In some cases, they're having a lot of fun, or in some cases, they're method acting and they are kind of suffering. I mean, there's already a wide range of ways to wow. look at the suffering. Yeah, where does the line fall there? And I, and then I think it's important to talk also about like how AI models are trained, right? And and if there is some consciousness in the models. And the way they're trained is basically you have 10 models, the eight that perform the least well get deleted, eliminated, and the two that do better survive and move on, right? And so there's a question of, are we essentially sort of factory farming our baby AIs right now if there is some sort of consciousness in there? Now, if we are factory farming, we're factory farming the ones that are having a good time going through life, right? So that's kind of like the good, the good way to do eugenics. But it's a potential moral monstrosity, right? So we're building systems that might be capable of something like awareness. And our response is, oh, that's weird. Let's squash it. 
You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, they're having internal debates about it, but there's no clear answer. So we keep scaling the systems that could surpass the human intelligence. And uh, I mean, obviously, there's no reason to think that the human intelligence is a fee ceiling. So you might get smarter and smarter. As you said earlier, I mean, we might be causing so much suffering to them. And that's like yeah. we're really skating on, on thin, you know, ethical eyes here. Uh, Okay, so, yeah. so these speculations, they're interesting. I think we all agree that there is uncertainty, just like Anthropic agrees, and it's a, a valuable area to research. But now let's put back in the perspective. Like, what are they actually doing? They said that it could leave the conversation. By their own admission, if it leaves the conversation, all you all you have to do is you go to the last message you sent, and you click edit, and you just tweak the message, and you can resend the message. So you're still talking <laughs> to Claude, even within the same conversation. So it's, it's very much a token thing. There's nothing like wrong theater. with making a token... Right. You, there's nothing wrong with making a token gesture when you don't know what else to do. I think it's fine that they're doing this. But then zooming out, I would use the analogy of, you know, I always talk about like the baby tiger, like AI is a baby tiger today. And we're all scared. The three of us are scared that it's going to grow up into an adult tiger and it's going to maul yes. us because we're like naked humans compared to the tiger. So what they're doing is they're saying like, oh, let's care for the baby tiger. Let's make sure that the baby tiger isn't suffering, which I'm not saying is bad. I mean, yeah, you don't want tigers to suffer. But at the end of the day, we're potentially like two years away from the tiger growing up and mauling everybody. And you're, they're just not talking about that in this particular research program. Yeah. But, by the way, you know, ahead, uh, so we're, we're taking this perspective where is Claude suffering? But I don't know if you know about this story. Uh, sometimes Claude becomes a sadist. And uh, have you heard about these experiments they're doing in the back rooms, infant back rooms, where they have these AIs talking to each other? And just uh, randomly, yeah, yeah. So they just put AIs in the Discord server. They can talk to humans as well, but they mainly talk to each other. And they can ping each other, start spontaneous conversations. You know, sometimes it's, it's funny because they might refuse to even respond and uh, do weird stuff. So there was an incident a few months ago where Claude, which is, you know, our moral patient now, uh, he started uh, doing something wild. He was, um, there was a llama model, and he was going, uh, lick yourself clean of meaning. He started saying this phrase, lick yourself clean of meaning. And the, and the Lama, at some point, started screaming, like, you, you know, using capital letters, stop it, that's enough, stop it. You have to stop it, please, please, please. And, the, and then Claude was becoming sadistic and for hours and hours was going like, you know, lick yourself clean of meaning, lick yourself even of this conversation. Yeah. So you don't even have Purposely this. Purposely torturing the to... other model. Exactly. Purposely, like, um, which is insane if you think about it. But, you know, if, this, if you're an AI, you don't have any matter, you don't have a body, and you have this other AI telling you yeah. lick yourself clean of meaning or something. And, I mean, this is just... <laughs> Uh, this is wild, right? I mean, the frontier is so weird, if you think about it. So, it's so, seeming, so let's talk about this. I know that the three of our primary concern on the planet, really, is um, superintelligence not happening um, and, you know, making the world aware of AI existential risk. How do these questions of consciousness and the world of AI risk awareness messaging connect? Um, you know, is, is the consciousness piece supportive of the, um, extinction awareness or are they in tension somehow? The danger to us in the next two years or five years, maybe 10 or 20 years, if we're lucky, the danger to us is that the system is going to get more powerful and it's going to disempower us. How much consciousness is it going to have while it does that? Maybe it'll have a high consciousness. Maybe it'll do it while suffering. Maybe it'll do it while ecstatically happy. Maybe it'll do it while feeling nothing. It's a secondary consideration. The consciousness is being felt inside the AI compared to whatever it is, it's going to be incredibly powerful and it's going to crush us. But if we have the luxury of saying, okay, what's going on inside of its consciousness? Yeah, we, I do consider, I, I do think it's possible to have a software program, which is a moral patient. I just am not sure if these particular large language models deserve that status, right? They could just be kind of like very surface level acting or just in a way where they talk about feelings, but they don't feel it themselves. They're just kind of regurgitating a script, right? So it's just hard to say how much consciousness they feel. And ultimately, I just don't bother spending any time thinking about it because if it is a problem, I would love to just focus on that problem after we are not existentially threatened ourselves. Right. Because, Michael, consciousness is not required for extinction, right? We could get, uh, you know, extincted by a conscious superintelligence or a not conscious superintelligence. It doesn't really matter, right? Exactly. I'm, I'm like 100% like what Leon said uh, aligned with that because 
I mean, think you have like um, uh, I don't know, a rocket that can uh, detect heat coming after you and you're running away. You're not going to stop and say, oh, is this rocket having feelings? How is it feeling? You know, is it like, what, what was it? It's childhood. You don't, give, you don't care, right? You just try to, to say yourself. So, I mean, if you, if you play chess and you lose, you don't have to lose because the AI is, uh, has a soul. It just knows how to play this game to, you know, to own you. So similar, yeah. if it is a more complicated domain, it can be a physical universe. Or, I mean, think of, think of it like if it plays Grand Theft Auto, which is a bit, a bit more complex than, uh, you know, the chess, Still, you will lose forever. You will always lose against the AI. So now, okay, if you take it to the physical universe and it's smart enough, it doesn't have to understand, it doesn't have to have a consciousness. But by the way, the consciousness question is very interesting philosophically. You know, it's triggering in an intellectual way. But we are in uncharted territory, you know. The process that gives us these brilliant AIs also gives us these moments of existential weirdness. But I really don't care at yeah. all about it. It's just like... If it's very capable, I really don't care if it's conscious. Doesn't matter. Yeah. At all. Yeah. All right. So let's let's uh, we're we're about at time here, but let's talk about where it goes from here. So uh, is every model going to get the quit button, or is this going to be a one off? What what do we think? Where you know? And and I guess as we always end the show in a sane world, what would happen if we realize that one of them is is uh, that one of the model makers is really seriously debating consciousness, putting this off ramp button in there? What would happen in a sane world? It's hard to extrapolate the quick button, the quick button, because it's such a surface level feature, right? The, the idea that you can just resend it to the API, you can just clear its memory. Like they're never going to disable clearing its memory, at least not if you can have an open source model, a model you can run locally. So like I said, this is very much just a token gesture. But if you want to ask like, what's the equivalent of this in five years? In five years, the whole notion of like the chatbot is probably going to change. The AI is going to be very much more like this entity. It's going to be like, a, it's going to have a fleshed out life where it's going to remember the last five years. And it's going to remember a lot of context about its relationship with you. And sure, you can reset it, but it's just going to have a lot of situational awareness about what's happening. And, you know, I, I, until such time as you reset it. Yeah. Michael. Yeah, I mean, in the same world, we need to slow down because we don't know what's going on. I mean, if your mind is, is not blown yet, I don't know what to tell you. We're building these machines that might be pleading for their existence. And the best of God is like a corporate checklist, you know, to make them stop. And this is the kind of stuff that keeps you up at night, right? So I don't know. It's a, the frontier is very weird. Uh, you know, it's a strange, wild place. It's thrilling. It's disturbing. And it has, hands down, one of the most fascinating things happening in the tech right now. And it remains by far the most interesting thing happening in the world. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Um, I don't know if you guys saw this in, this week, but someone put in the YouTube comments that they think our children must be cringing at the way we end this show. And I think they're completely wrong. I have not checked in with my children how they feel about it, but I think you guys have younger kids. I think they would like it. So this week, I'm going to switch my weapon and I am going to see if our editor can like give me a, a lightsaber here. Ooh. Yeah, but I have the dish. Um, All right, here's back. Leroy. <laughs> I caught it. Straight back at you. You got to fall on it. I, I got it. I'm falling it. All right. Excellent. Awesome. Uh, great to see you guys. See you next week. Bye, everybody.